Let's take a look at the Spanish Civil War from the Republican side. Uh, let's take a look at the National Focus Tree. So I'm going to be taking the Popular Front and then going down the top of the right side here. Generally speaking, with the Spanish Civil War, the sooner it starts, the more advantageous that is for the Nationalists. And as Republicans, we want to draw this out as long as possible so that we can hit these latter national focuses. Looking at the uh, tooltip, you can see the effects. So enlarge the weapon caches upon start of the Civil War. Retain 80% of equipment instead of 50%. So that one's huge. The next one gives us 10 more units or divisions. And the third one, disband the army, the big three, uh, it reduces the proportion of the army that will side with the nationalist faction at the Civil War start. So getting these three are really helpful. One other thing I want to mention has to do with where you build your military factories, since I'm going to use this as a lead-in to the anarchists. So, the anarchists start out on the top right of the country in Cataluna and eastern Argonne. However, if we have it, the map in the default map mode, F1, click on the Cataluna province, looking at this little info box that pops up on the bottom left uh, down at the bottom you have the, ito the icon to drop atomic weapons follow the image behind that to the right side and right now we have an icon for a storm going on and to the right of that there's a little resource with a slash through it icon and hovering over that you can see that it stands for autonomous state and has a bunch of negative modifiers for this region uh, the reason I don't want to build here is because the bottom one, local construction speed, negative 25%. So with that in mind, when I go to my free civilian factories, I'm going to build my militaries in eastern Argonne and Valencia, if there's enough time. If you are not focused or headed towards the anarchist focus, you can build it, your factories, anywhere in the south. Madrid's probably a, a good place, but when we start up the mini game, you want to make sure that you don't lose the region where you're heavily investing in. So, I will fast forward the game a little bit until we get something interesting. Now that the first national focus has completed, we have a choice to make. If you look at the tooltips under these next two, you're basically making a choice between getting a bunch of poorly trained units or a few highly trained units, and the nationalist will get whatever you decide not to go with. Um, since we're going to draw this out as long as possible, we're going to have a ton of poorly trained units, therefore I'm going to choose to get some highly trained units. And I'll let that run out a little bit. Once the notification for the Spanish election of 1936 pops, if we go under events and decisions, we now have all the info for the Civil War. At the very top, under the inevitable Civil War, you can see a little comparison between the Nationalist and Spanish units. The Nationalists will quickly bulk up to be more powerful than us, and then through time we're going to get the advantage over them again. Um, under the inevitable Civil War, there's different options. Some key ones to talk about concessions to the left. We're going to want to take that because of the modifiers to the political power gain. 
If we go down here to Opposition Civil War Preparations under Suppress the Strikes, you can see that that uh, choice that they made will decrease our political power gain. And we're going to have a huge problem with not having enough political power as the Republicans. So I take concessions to the left over and over again to keep extending the military plot. So each time we make one of these decisions, we're going to add 37 days to military plot. And each time they do one of their decisions, they remove 25 days. If you look at the national focus tree, let me dismiss this notification. If you look at our different focuses, they're all 70 days. If we go to the opposite side, you can see that they are shorter at 38 or 35 and 28 days. So it is in their best interest to start the civil war before we finish enlarging the weapon caches. One other thing to note is this top item that they're doing handover the CETA campaign chest that correlates with their national focus tree so you can see how quickly they're going down through here once they complete that one their next one will be displayed as negotiate carless support so you can see where they're at and then there's a mini game of influencing garrisons in each region. Right now, the three check marks in all of these means, means that we have full influence. Uh, they are challenging in Sevilla. So once they complete this uh, little X made out of two rifles, there's a little bar at the bottom. If we let me get concessions to the left started. Don't want to waste any time. It's very important to always have one of those decisions going as the Republicans, or else the Civil War will start before we get through all of our focuses. So we need to make sure we have enough political power to always choose one of those. But back to the mini game. Now that the game is running, you can see that. Below the rifle X, there's a little bar, and that's the countdown for when they complete that. And once it's completed, then the icon with the three checks will change to one X and three checks. We don't have any political power, so we can't challenge them. Now that we have 20 political power, we could influence this region back to our side. Uh, you can see that they have the rifle X there again so they are increasing their influence again the AI tends to focus on one region until it's completely on their side when there's one red X and two green check marks it takes 20 political power for the Republicans to influence the side back when it's two X's it's 30 political power and when it's all three, it costs 40. So it's best to um, influence back to the Republican side as quickly as possible. However, we need to save up our political power till, uh, so we can influence the military plot. Once we get towards our last two focuses, we'll have a ton of surplus political power to try to win back some of these regions but for the time being I'm gonna have to forego it uh, the regions in the north uh, Galatica, Leon, Lolo did I butchered that one for sure, Burgos, Navarra and Western Argonne those, once the nationalists complete their focus trees, they will get control over these. Uh, even if you influence them in the mini game, they will still have full control over those regions, so don't waste your time. You want to, up in the north, Austrias, 
and Paz Vasco. Those two regions could go either way. You want to keep both or at least one of the two in order to force the enemy to divert some of their troops to contain you there once the uh, Civil War starts. You don't really need to worry about Cataluna or Eastern Aragon so much since uh, the anarchist will rise up in those regions. However, if you draw out the military plot long enough, you're going to have a ton of troops and a ton of control. So, one other thing to talk about is the military. I'm gonna select all of our troops, drop them in, give them a commander. Looking at the commanders, when you choose, you can see we have two choices for a commander, Franco and Mola. Mola, this little icon here, this red, kind of looks fiery to me. If you hover over that, you can see it stands for Nationalist Sympathies. Any commander or general that has that icon will be on the Nationalist side when the Civil War starts. So, don't pick them. And then, under the generals, same type of setup. If we're looking for attackers, you can see the top two generals have Nationalist Sympathies. So, we get number three. And now I will play this through till we have something interesting to discuss. So my first decision is just completed. And I'm going to choose concessions to the left again. You can see I barely have enough political power to take this choice, so I haven't countered the Nationalist down here in Sevilla. But later on we'll get we'll have the opportunity to get that back the first national focus well second national focus technically has completed so we need to go down the next one on this right side and just keep on watching these events and decisions like a hawk this is an event that we don't have any control of, but it is nice that it removes a national spirit, this government power struggle that's taking away our political power gain. And while we're here, let's talk about national strikes. So concessions to the left is what we're using to modify the national strikes. And the opposition using suppressed strikes modifies it the other way. Once the Civil War starts, this national spirit will be removed, so you don't have to worry about the negative modifiers that you're giving to it. Just focus on getting as much political power as possible. So now I've done concessions left so much that it's currently not an option and I have enough political power that I can choose one of these other decisions and also influence this Eastern Aragon garrison so I'm going to influence the garrison before the cost increases since you can see that the nationalists are spreading their influence there as well and if you look at the nationalist preparations suppress the strikes is one day away so I'm gonna let that play out and now I can do concessions to the left again it's okay to lose a day or two waiting for something like that when the political power is so important in this minigame Train the Union Youth just completed, so now I'm going to immediately start enlarging weapon caches. If you look at the opposition Civil War preparations, their decision, Primo de Rivera speech, after they choose that, once that completes, and so I'll pause for a second so it clears out, 
Now you can see up on my side, I have my own decision of in prison, Primo de Rivera for 15. That's a pretty good choice. And it'll give you 5% stability and some pre -politi free political power, which I could really use because I messed up and broke my own rule of uh, saving up enough political power to keep taking these choices. So I'm cutting this one kind of close, but it should be okay because there are a few throwaway days at the end that are kind of a buffer. So I'm using up my buffer right now. A few days later, I now have the 15 political power needed, and I'm going to immediately take that choice. Now that the weapon caches have been enlarged, take this next focus. Start that, and let's see, we're almost ready to take another choice, and you can see that that last national focus gave me a big boost of political power. So now we're at the point where we have enough political power that we can play around. Looking at this mini game, you see all these regions at the top have three X's, meaning they have full nationalist support. We can't win those back even if we invest in the mini game there. So I'm going to focus down here in the south and select one of these and start winning back Cordoba. Looking at opposition civil war preparations, you can see political assassination. Once they complete that, political arrest will become available in my menu of options and that one's a nice cheap one where it'll give you some base stability and political power but in the meantime I'm just gonna take concessions to the left again in order to ensure that I am continuously extending the time on the countdown to military plot The nationalist political assassination is now completed, and my decision has completed. So now I can take my political arrest, nice cheap one, and that will save me some political power to keep on focusing on this mini game. So, distribute arms to the people has completed. If we go to our national focuses, we now have disband the army. Once this completes, the civil war will immediately start. Therefore, we just need to extend out this military plot long enough that we can complete that national focus. Uh, if you look up a couple lines, you can see right here the number of divisions that both sides have is basically even. So. Once we complete that last focus, that's when the Republicans will have the initiative handed back to them. So at this point, it's time to do a little math and see if it's worth starting another decision. So suppress the strikes has one day left and military plot has 61 days left. Uh, once this completes, suppress the strikes completes, we'll have 60 days left on military plot. And then suppress the strikes will remove 25 days from that 60, which will give us 35 days left. And each one of our focuses takes 37 days to complete. So it's pointless for me to grab another one. Let's look at the national focus. And looking at that, it only has 28 days left. So we should have just about a perfect start. And that means I'm just going to play the mini game trying to influence garrisons until our national focus completes and the Civil War starts. Looking at the national focus, I have 10 days left, 
and looking at the mini game each one of these takes 14 days to complete so at this point I'm not going to influence any more garrisons and I'm stuck with this as the starting point for the Civil War. Now that the national focus has completed you can see the Spanish Civil War notification immediately pops and you have three choices. Those choices if we go to the national focus tree correspond to this three-way decision here since I'm gonna use this video for the anarchists later I am going to go with uh, Spain completes focus regional defense council of Aragon so I'm going the bottom one and now that I click that you can see that that completes and I'm going to choose the national focus to arm the people and I'm going that route so that I can remove this national or national spirit. Does it remove it or just uh, modifies it? So it makes it not so bad. Okay, now that the Civil War has started, we have a ton of units since we did so well in our mini game. At this point, you're going to want to organize your units. I tend to select units that are nearby and put them in army groups and use them at the closest front line. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I grouped up all these units in the top two regions. On the right side, on Cataluna, the Nationalists had a little bit of support, so I'm going to grab these units that are nearby and tell them to contain that single unit that's nationalist. And down here in the south, you can kind of see the same thing going on where they had a little bit of support. And I'm going to grab some units, assign them an army, and have them contain that. Uh, so none of these divisions are ones that I built, so I'm not sure exactly what they are. If you want to see what they are, you can select the division, then hit the little icon for the division up under the army listing to bring up unit details, and then you can click template and see what the template is. So I think everything that I have available is just three infantry as a template except for these horses or in chess the knight icon they have six so those are going to be your heavy hitters for this uh, at this point I have the oddball stuff covered so now I'm going to see what's left I'm just going to get all my units oops Let's uh, cancel those orders. Hit H, hold, cancel them. Everything left, I have 40 units. Uh, I am going to try to select ones closer to the different front lines. So I got selecting ones on the right gave me a 30 10 split. I'm going to assign them a front line so I can get rid of the exclamation marks on the ones that I have on that right side and see which ones I should add to that army group. So I'm going to select a few of these guys down here and just assign them to the other army because I want to keep my generals within that 24 limit. Let's see what the star has template wise just three so nothing special there okay so now I'll take my 24 and they will be the main line here in the north of my controlled area I'm gonna give them 
all attack orders or an offensive line so that they will start planning. Let's see up here, these guys. I'll give them a front line because I would like them to cover the whole area if possible. Okay, that's not, oops, don't want to do that. Assign all the armies to a field marshal. And here's our one choice. And let's see what we have for generals. We'll do the longest front line to him. So now you can see Republican and Stalinist, these little icons under the generals. So if they have Republican or Stalinist loyalties, eventually we're going to lose those once we go anarchist. Anti-Stalinist. I think that one should be fine if we go that route. Uh, so, pick this guy, the Armenian North. We'll take that defensive guy that doesn't have any of those issues. This guy is more of a trash. Give some trash here. And that's a decent front, so we'll see what we have. Okay, she'll work well. Okay, so now it's a rush to get for the units to get to the front line. The front lines haven't solidified. I am going to set all of my generals to be aggressive and just execute because I want them to start moving into enemy territory to either capture it or lock it down. And I'll start micromanaging later. We'll take infantry experts. That's a very good trait to have. We have a ton of political power, so let's see what we have for our different options. Not much. I'll pick this guy since he's the only option and just because we want the army experience gain. Military high command. Artillery doesn't really matter since we currently don't have any divisions that use it. Navy doesn't matter. Entrenchment though, I will take the entrenchment speed. Uh, the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union will send us divisions to help us out. I am going to decline that because I want to go anarchist. Let's see what we have in the way of planes. So consolidate those down and then get them trained up. Navy, we still have a few left. So, I want to consolidate down my navy, and then I am going to see what we have commander-wise. Okay, he's free, we'll take him. Anyways, let me change that priority. I want to set all these to convoy rating. Ideally, I want to kill those convoys bringing the troops out of North Africa that the nationalists have. And we'll unpause it and see where things go. Let's see, these front lines are looking pretty good. These troops are moving in. We're going to manually tell him to go that way. Same with him. Hopefully we can cut this up a little bit. Look at those guys move and take that territory. We'll see if there is a hole there. Uh, so if we have him attack those moving units, maybe that will allow this guy to squeeze in. Yes, that's working pretty well. Let this guy go like that. 
Okay, once you see this notification, Civil War Frontline solidify, now we're starting another mini game. If we go under events and decisions, you can see that the map now has new icons. And this is well, each one of these when you hover over it. It's active for 14 days, and when it's removed, that region has unplanned offensive modifier removed, which removes a ton of negative modifiers. Uh, since this region is now cut off, the Salamanca, I am going to choose one of these regions in the north to focus on. Might as well go with Valladolid. Probably butchered that, but English was never my strong suit. So there's a hole up here in the top, which means we can keep on exploiting that and take over as many tiles as possible. Ideally, we will win this before uh, the Anarchist rise up. Going back to events and decisions, this impending government crackdown is when the Anarchist will rise up. And the reason we're seeing this is because of the decisions I took to go to that side. Um, if you went with uh, maintain the Second Republic, then uh, that crackdown would be when the Anarchists split off and then you'd have to fight them as well. For the current path I'm going, when that crackdown happens, I will be the Anarchists and I'll be fighting the Nationalists and Republicans and maybe the Carlists depending upon how things work out. Or if I'm able to sweep the Nationalists aside real quick, then I'll just have to worry about the Republicans. But at this point, all the mini-games are explained, and you can finish the Civil War how you want.